Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. And today we've got a Mr. Baldwin video. We are very close to catching up to being where we have watched all of Mr. Baldwin's videos. We are getting very close to that mark. But we got uh, a few more to do, so we're going to try to get them done. But this video is, the comment section goes nuts for my reaction to these monsters. We're going to get right into it, ladies and gentlemen. Hit the like button, subscribe, and comment your thing down below. If you like to help the channel out with a donation, you can leave a super thanks or link to PayPal is in the description. Bless you. If you haven't heard about what happened at the Gay Pride Parade in the Netherlands, it's likely because you haven't seen the infamous security footage that's currently going viral on Reddit and other places on the internet. Today, I'm gonna show you portions of that security footage and tell you the story about what's really happening so you have context and can really appreciate what you're seeing. But before we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story form, this is very short. This is 11 minutes. This one's very short. This is going to be probably the shortest Mr. Baldwin video I've done. Format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once a week. So, if that's of interest to you, please swap out all of the Pop Tarts in the Like Buttons Pantry for the unfrosted kind. Also, please. Oh, that's messed up. Un oh, that's just messed up, man. How could, you, how could you even suggest someone do that to anyone, Mr. Baldwin? That is. Just that's just evil. You're an evil man, Mr. Bowen. You are pure evil to suggest that. Pride Amsterdam. Okay. Twenty seventh, twenty eighteen, in a little city in. Oh, this is twenty eighteen. Oh, okay, this is. This is recent. This is. Six years ago. Five years ago. In the Netherlands, a security camera captured six men walking calmly toward this brick bungalow inside one of the country's holiday parks. A holiday park is a place that offers cheap accommodations to tourists. They typically have things like campsites, RV parking, cheap bungalows for rent, and they also often offer things like swimming and golfing and bowling, so it's kind of like an all-in-one for families on vacation. But on this September day, these six men caught on camera were neither family nor on vacation. Instead, as they walked, it was very clear from their body language that the only thing they were interested in was getting inside of their holiday bungalow. Once they did reach the front door of this bungalow, the apparent leader of the group, who had dark brown hair and a full beard, he pulled out a key, unlocked the door, he opened it up, and then he made sure the rest of the men took off their shoes before walking inside. And then once all the men were inside the door, the leader shut the door and locked it behind them, and then barefoot, they walked through the hallway into this corner. I know I've watched this video before. No, I might have not watched it on the channel. I don't think I've watched it on the channel. But I've definitely watched this Mr. Baldwin video before because now when I see the CTTV footage, I think I know what happens here. If I've reacted to this on the channel, I apologize. I don't think I have. But I definitely know. I've, I, I actually don't know I've seen this before. I don't remember why I've seen it. Because once I saw the CCTV footage, I know what, I know what this is. I'm going to let this play. Because I was trying to figure, I was like, the CCTV footage in the thing, I was like, oh, I know what happens. Okay. So I'll let this play out, because you might, if you've never watched this, you're going to be in shock. Because this is, but the, I'll, I'll let this play. Her living room in the back of the bungalow. And in this room, there was this L-shaped couch that was centered on a coffee table and a couple of chairs scattered throughout the rest of the room. And so the six men kind of took up seats in these different places. And then after they were all sitting down, two of the men who had been seen walking into the bungalow carrying backpacks and duffel bags, they pulled those bags out and set them on the coffee table. And as soon as these two men did that, the other four men who had been chatting amongst themselves went completely silent and turned and just faced the bags on the table. It was very clear that whatever was in the bags was very significant. So significant, in fact, that the group had pulled most of the curtains across all of the windows inside of this bungalow to make sure no one outside could look in and potentially see the contents of these bags. And once the two men unzipped the duffel bags and backpack and began putting the contents of the bags onto the table, it became incredibly clear why the men 
men were so on edge. Inside of these bags were guns, and in the Netherlands, no private citizen is allowed to possess them. Over the next hour, the two men who had actually carried the guns into the bus. Okay. Uh, I don't remember that part. No, so that so no private person is allowed to own guns in the Netherlands. Hmm. Interesting. For some reason, that just shocked me. I didn't think I didn't know that was a thing. They no, uh, no private citizens allowed to own guns or a certain amount of guns in the Netherlands. Bungle. Can they make that rule like the United States and all that? they began going over some instruction with the other four men of how to use these slick black pistols and AK-47 rifles. They taught them how to load the guns and reload and how to aim, and they did a number of dry firing exercises, which is basically pulling the trigger on any real gun when the gun is not loaded. And so these four students paid careful attention to their two instructors, and at some point they became more confident, and you could just see the excitement was building in the room. At one point, one of the students grabbed two two of the AK-47 rifles and held one in each arm. What is this vest? I feel like I've watched this before, but I also don't remember things. Like, what is this vest? I don't remember the vest. And pretended to fire them simultaneously, like you would see in the Rambo movies. But when one of the two instructors reached back into one of these bags and pulled out a new item, a vest, and laid it on the coffee table, immediately the mood in the room shifted again. Now the students seemed more nervous than excited. One of the four students eventually walked forward and somewhat reluctantly extended his arm to allow the instructor to slip the vest onto him. And then once the vest was put on the student, you can see in the camera footage, there are pockets all over this vest with little wires poking out of them. This vest was a suicide vest and the pockets contained explosives. As one of the instructors showed the student in the vest which cord to pull in order to detonate himself, you can hear in the background someone saying, when the police come, you can take them with you. A little over two hours later, these six men were done, and they began packing up their arsenal of new weapons back into the bags, and then they stood up to leave. But when they left, it was the students who had the bags of weapons, not the two instructors. Once the six men had left the bungalow and were back outside again, they put their shoes back on, they locked the bungalow behind them, and then the two instructors were seen on camera walking away from the bungalow to a separate car they drove off, and then the four men that now had the weapons, they walked to a nearby white cargo van, which contained one other man who had not been inside of the bungalow with them, but he was very much a part of this group. He was their driver. And so as the four men with guns approached the white van. I keep wanting to say, I have to wait until the end. I have to wait until the end. The driver saw them, he climbed out, he ran around to the back and opened up the back doors that led into the windowless back cargo area of the van. And the four men with guns, they climbed inside. The driver shut the van, climbed back into the driver's seat. And then before long, the driver was leaving the parking lot and heading north towards the city of Amsterdam, which is the capital of the Netherlands. Every year, Amsterdam plays host to one of the largest gay pride parades and events in the world. The location is significant to the LGBTQ community because it was here in 2001 that the first gay marriage bill was signed into law, making the Netherlands the first country in the world to legalize gay marriage. So for one week a year, hundreds of thousands of people pour out onto the streets and line the canals of Amsterdam, all drawn together to affirm gay rights and to celebrate their sexual expression, preference, and identity and the men in the white windowless van intended to use their new weapons and training to kill or maim as many parade goers as possible. They were hopeful that their terrorist attack would rival or even eclipse the attack from 2015 in Paris in a nightclub that killed or injured more than 500 people and sent shockwaves through Europe. 30 minutes later, the four men in the back of this windowless van felt the van slow down and pull off the main road and not come to a complete stop, but just kind of begin to slow roll, which was odd because they had no reason to slow down and they were at least 30 minutes away from their destination. And so instinctively, the men reach down and make sure their guns are safely stowed inside of their bags and out of sight in case somebody opens the back door. They don't want people to know they have guns, they are illegal. And so as the van continued to go painfully 
painfully slowly for really no reason that was clear, the men in the back of the van were really starting to worry that something was wrong. Now remember, they have no windows. They can't look outside. They don't know what's going on. However, there was a small crack in the partition that separated the back of the van from the front of the van where the driver was. And so the men in the back of the van began craning their necks and looking through this little crack to try to see if they could understand what was in front of the van and you know why the driver had stopped. And when these men looked through that little crack and they saw what was out there, they immediately began to panic. They began reaching down and fumbling for their bags, trying to open them up to get their guns. And then by the time they're kind of getting the guns into their hands, all the doors on the van fly open and the men in the back just begin firing their guns blindly at the open doors. But when they pull their triggers, nothing happens because their guns were fake. They had been sold to them by the people who were flinging open their doors, the police in tactical gear with their dogs, and they knew these guys had fake guns. They knew their suicide vests were fake. They were full. That's so good. Look, you can't nothing but pop for that. You can't hate that if you tried. These guys want to go do a terrorist attack on a gay pride parade that want they wanted to kill more than 500 people that was their that was their target 500 people and they got stopped because they got outsold by so fake guns fake explosives fake everything by police who then cut them and arrested them fucking amazing and to think that four men five men actually believed they were going to do what they were doing and never second guessed it for a second is fucking insane and evil as it gets full of fake explosives they have nothing lethal inside of this van and so the police they just fling the doors open and send in the dogs and so the dogs they jump into this van and these wannabe terrorists are screaming and they're firing their fake guns at the dogs as the dogs are shredding these terrorists to bits and then whenever they tried to jump out the police would just pistol whip the terrorists until finally Oh my god, the giddy excitement. I can see why the comment section... I, he actually has giddy joy. joy. It's like his greatest moment. This is his greatest story. This is his crowning achievement is to get to tell this beautiful story of these fake these terrorists getting pistol whipped and dog shredded. All of these wannabe terrorists were in the fetal position crying or they were crouched down with their hands over their head. It would turn out the two instructors who had brought the duffel bags of guns into the bungalow with the other men, they were not other fellow terrorists. They were undercover police officers who were a part of the special national anti-terrorism team who were able to infiltrate this terrorist cell. These undercover cops were the ones who sold the fake guns and fake explosives to the terrorists, and they were the ones who set up this meeting at the bungalow, which allowed them to place cameras and listening devices all over the place plus they were also able to bug the white van because they knew they would be departing the bungalow inside of it so all the wannabe terrorists that you saw on camera plus two others that were not seen on camera but were totally involved were all sentenced on October 8th 2020 to anywhere from 10 to 17 years in prison meanwhile the Amsterdam pride parade went off without a hitch So that's gonna do it. If you got something out, there was only a few missing things I wish he added. One, how did the police find out about it? Like, how did the police infiltrate it? How did they find out, and who they were. Those are the only two things I wished. Who the criminals were. The only two information things I wish to know. But Mr. Bond does not tell us. Ladies and gentlemen. That is it for this reaction video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Comment what you think down below. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.